Hello, welcome to Sex Tech Talk on the 22nd of April. Today we're going to be talking about sex tech and how it can work for you, what interests you, what the future might be and maybe where it's going for consumers. So join us on the tweet, join us on the feed, there's plenty of people talking as well. We have uh, John Lane from Bedoink, um, very well known, great guy and he's really doing, <laughs> where's the weed, yeah, back at home. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie and Yeah, that's how we roll over here, you know. <laughs> um, if there's anything you'd like to know about the future of sex tech, ask us, we'll see if we can answer you, answer your questions. Um, there's plenty of other people joined in as well who might be able to answer it better than I can, so we'll see how it goes. Um, over the next hour or two, there'll be plenty of topics to talk about. Um, if you'd like to see our products, yeah, of course. Um, first of all, we have the Onyx, this one here. This one you might have seen online. Um, it's an interactive male masturbator. Um, that means that it's a masturbator that you know and love, probably uh, Fleshlight, our partners. But beyond that, it works online through a video chat. Um, the other product is the Pearl, which is a female vibrator and the pearl is touch sensitive. So when you touch the pearl up and down, the onyx can feel it on the other side of the world and reacts in response to it moving up and down in the same time. Uh, this works through a video chat which we developed and it's one of the only products that can connect in real time anywhere in the world and share a feeling that goes beyond the screen. It shares some sexual intimacy and it's what we hope is the start of moving sex tech into something that's a bit more normal, something that you'd use on a regular basis, maybe with someone that you fancy, someone that you wanna wanna date but maybe can't see on a regular basis. You can do it online and uh, change your sex life, that's for sure. It's definitely something different. Um, whether it's for you or not, that's that's a personal question. But there are definitely people out there that need this and want this. And, yeah. and uh, I think that, what's the website? Our website is kiru.com, K-I-I-R-O-O, -O. that's how you spell Kiru. Yeah, I have used it, of course I've used it. <laughs> I, I think it's brilliant, personally. There's, it's a totally different feeling to what you might have felt on any other masturbator. It's not like a masturbator that goes up and down it actually moves consecutively to stimulate you and simulate the feeling of moving. So when you put it on, you don't actually have to move, it will move up and down for you. That's, the, that's where it's unique inside. This sleeve here, this is Fleshlight sleeve, it's their Fleshlight patented super skin material. And when you click off the top, you can remove the sleeve. The sleeve comes out and inside of the rings, which I'll show you, move one by one, back and forth. And that compresses to stimulate you up and down, up and down. Um, for different people, they like different speeds, they like different textures, and we're moving forwards to make a, a sleeves that have different, uh, different interfaces such as pussies and mouths and asses and whatever, all the stuff that you've seen on Fleshlight before. Other products out there at the moment, there's, um, there's some in Japan at the moment that we've heard of, uh, for example there's one called Cyclone and that's a similar masturbator but it spirals to stimulate you. Uh, that also connects directly with the uh, like things like uh, adult movies um, to move in real time. Uh, it's, it's considerably bigger than our products and considerably heavier as well. It doesn't have uh, a flashlight sleeve, they've made their own sleeves which are interchangeable with textures inside, depends if you like that or not. Um, Hello and welcome to Sex Tech Talk with me, Alex. I work at Kiro Amsterdam and today we're going to be talking on Twitter about sex tech and trying to help you guys with any questions that you might have.
Um, anything from what is a sex toy to how do you use this crazy one or why do they make dragon dildos? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that one, but I can guess and <laughs> we can ask some other professionals about it. Maybe you might get the answer that you're looking for. Um, the idea of Sex Tech Talk is to bring sex tech into the mainstream media a bit more and to discuss how or why it's good, how or why it can change sex lives and maybe even where we're going in the future. <coughs> if you have any questions, fire away. You can either tweet them online, uh, hashtag sex tech talk, or you can ask me directly on here and I will reply with them here as well. We have a few key questions lined up that we want to talk about as a group and I'd be happy to hear your opinions and let me know what you do or don't agree with. Just eating some crisps. I'm hungry now. In about 18 minutes, we're going to start with the questions and we'll discuss uh, our top five. Um, they're along the lines of pleasure products and what works best for you or what doesn't. Have you guys ever used any sex toys? I know it's a bit of a personal question, but there's nothing to be ashamed about. We'd like to know what's good for you, what's not so good, whether you've found something really interesting out there or something that you think needs to be more widely spread or even something that you think is totally fucking ridiculous to be honest. Oh, you know what, I hope they bring out a second version of that movie Her. If they bring out a second version of that movie, I'm definitely watching it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. We're putting our stuff in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And God, what, what would the operating system say next? Because he had sex with her in the, in the game, you know, mm -hmm. but can you really orgasm from just listening to people? I don't know. Have, has anyone here ever like been so stimulated by listening to something sexy that they've managed to come? Probably phone sex, right? Yeah. Really? Does phone sex still exist? You know, when you call out those numbers and you're like, hey, talk dirty to me. <laughs> I haven't done that in years. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing out. <laughs> So this is a little bit about the brand, we might as well talk about it, plug it whilst it's still can. <laughs> um, Kiru Fleshlight, who ex winners, gold award winners this year, um, because we're trying to bring forward something new in the world of sex um, online. Uh, our devices connect over video chat and there's some more opportunity for it to go further, such as like webcam or synchronise with adult porn movies. Um, and Part of our, our ethos is that men and women are obviously equal and that sex online can be clean. Like cyber sex is not a dirty thing, it doesn't have to be terrible. It can be safe, it can be secure, it can be fun. And um, this is how our two products connect. The, you have the Onyx and here you have Pearl. This is the touch sensitive vibrator and this is Onyx the interactive masturbator. So this feels what this does in real time, um, and it connects through a video chat, so much like Skype, but with added products on top. Um, it's Bluetooth enabled, that's how they connect to your computer, or you're coming to tablet pretty soon. Um, and it could potentially use 4G or 5G, is actually in development at the moment. More about 5G later. Um, Pearl was designed to be quite discreet and quite modern. We wanted it to be different to all the other vibrators. We wanted it to be white, which a lot of people don't understand, but we did it to contrast to the 
the adult industry at the moment, we wanted it to stand out, but at the same time be sophisticated, um, adult, and kind of luxury, you know? The onyx is similar. If you can spot it, it's actually there. We made it so that it can blend into the background. Maybe maybe your nan would walk past and go, oh, look at that, that speaker. Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A oh, nice sound system. Yeah, it's actually my masturbator nan. <laughs> I think I think that would be a funny scenario to be in. Um, well, Professors through your grandmother. Yeah, yeah. And if you see there, there's Fleshlight on the right. Number one male masturbator in the world, and we are extremely proud to say that we're working with them. They're a great company to work with. Uh, not to mention the vast amount of fleshlight girls and fleshlight boys who are beautiful to look at and great to work with. If you like what you hear, there's also plenty in the press, um, all about sex tech, coming from everything from Cosmopolitan to Playboy to Engadget. Vice even did a documentary about it. And there's plenty of people talking about it, so jump on and talk about it. I think it's worth discussing because we can only get more opinions and it can only get better with more people that join. If you want to talk to us directly, hit us up on Twitter or you can follow our, our Instagram for daily pictures, sexy cocktails to get things in the mood, you know, whatever it takes to have some fun from long distance with some other people, preferably your partner or preferably uh, somebody you just met. Tinder maybe, that'd be a good idea. Maybe you could talk about how people can find a date if they uh, bought a single device. Maybe go to Grindr. That's true, Tinder. that's true. Um, as well as working with a partner as a couple, you can buy the Onyx and connect with other females online or other males online to share an experience that doesn't involve having to go on a date. You can actually fuck online before you even meet. Is that classed as uh, sex on a first date? I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you guys to decide. But yeah, change, change, yeah, I think you'll change the rules and what defines a, a, a date or a, a relationship in the modern world. Any questions that you guys got lined up, please hit away. Add them onto our feed at kiro.com. Follow at Marvie Darling and you'll be able to read all her blogs about sexual health, about all of our graters under the sun. She has so many you wouldn't even believe. <laughs> I've seen them. <laughs> Buckets. And if you have any other questions you'd like to ask uh, or get an answer from a female perspective, then Marvi Darling is a great person to inform about everything. She's really good, really friendly, and I'm sure she can answer 99% of things because unfortunately she doesn't have a dick. So <laughs> she can't answer those questions, but <laughs> the other ones she can. <laughs> Astor Glide has a nice question, maybe you can answer it. Do you see it? It's on the top of her sex tech Hello, Astor Glide. Well, teledildonics was a word, a term that was coined a long time ago. Uh, personally, I feel it's a little bit outdated, but it means sex toys that work remotely, hence with the word telly, like television or telephone. And the dildonics, I think, was just made up to go closely to dildos. Um, I think you could call it remote sex toys would be the most logical word uh, to relate it to, but People have also coined the term cyberdodonics, uh, interactive sex toys, interactive pleasure products, and that's something that's still in a debate, and we're going to ask a question about that later actually, so keep talking about that and we'll, uh, we'll discuss it in a minute. I say teledodonics actually. The teledodonics. <laughs> it's really fun to say, you think teledildonics kind of does freak people out as well, they're like what the hell does that mean and they can't sit there and figure it out, they have, mm -hmm. to, they have to analyse the word for a little minute, but um, it's not that 
it's not the nicest to write down, and it's not also the nicest thing to uh, to put on your box, like teledildonics. But things might change. I think the uh, the mobile phone wasn't called the mobile phone for quite a while. Four minutes to uh, sex tape bill. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Four minutes, guys. Four minutes. Follow Bedoink magazine as well for everything to do with sex, tech, and lifestyle. Great guys, loads of information, and good fun, good fun, good laugh. <laughs> Teletubbies, oh my god. <laughs> Whatever happened with those? <laughs> Hello. Oh yeah, stroke waffles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all about stroke waffles. The Dutch do know how to make food. Oh, really gluttonous food. It's tasty though. Everybody check in right now. Uh, no, I can't see you. No, you can just see me, but I can read what you're saying, so that's alright. Any questions, just ask me. I'm happy to answer them. And we can talk to the guys online as well. If you have a question or you want something to be discussed, please tweet it as well as asking on here because then that means you can join in with the discussion and I can actually converse with you. Um, but, yeah, it's nice to meet you. Two minutes till the first question. First question coming up in two minutes. guys can see, there's our lovely view of Amsterdam from the lucky 13th floor. Where are you right now? Shout out to Opening Gateways. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Barcelona. Oh, nice. Good weather? Oh, Vancouver. Hello to Vancouver. Uh, say hello to Siswet. She retweeted us. Uh, hey, Siswet as well. One of our favourite webcam ladies. Heavy roller. Heavy roller. How'd you do? Okay, I'm getting ready to post the first question. So, the first question, jump, drive or whale, where is the dildo fail? What is an essential feature for you guys when it comes to sex toys? Is it about the power? Is it about the quality of the finish? Is it about how it connects with other products? Or is it purely just the looks? Do you just want it to look fun? Do you want it to, uh, to change shape? Is there anything special that you you've noticed with recent sex toys that you liked? Okay, function, that's valid, but why? Is it the fact that it vibrates in multiple modes, or would a benefit be being able to change it? Mm -hmm. Just 
got to do what it says in the box. Right, vibrate. <laughs> That's one of the things. True, true. It's got to do what it says on the box, in the box. Are there any products out there that anyone has experienced that totally failed in delivering what they said they would? Are there any products that are totally useless that you've discovered? Being easy to clean sounds like a valid answer actually. Most of them are waterproof nowadays, so that's a benefit, but not all of them. Ultimately, yeah, it seems like having the most pleasant experience, the biggest, the best orgasm, that would be the ultimate goal, right? But how's that achieved? There's a company out there called Mod, and they are doing open source vibrators. And with open source vibrators, you have the opportunity to change it, to work with other people, to add more motors, to change the exterior, um, connect it to, as far as I know, I think you can connect it with music and videos and all sorts of crazy things that you can code it with. So you kind of get the opportunity to, to become your own uh, computer scientist and mod your toy to whatever works best for you. Um, I wonder if Marvie Darling has one. <coughs> what design has anyone seen recently that is actually their favourite? Um, anything that stood out that looked beautiful or had real, like, real game changer for them? Personally, I have seen a brand called Smile Makers. Smile Makers is a great brand who've done four products that look beautiful and more than that they actually have great names. Uh, something like there's the Millionaire, the Frenchman, the Fireman and the Tennis Player. So they all look a little bit like what a Fireman would or a Millionaire would. Um, but the tennis player definitely, I would definitely suggest looking for them online. Um, I don't know if they, uh, what their current uh, situation is, but by the looks of it, it's something that totally stands out from the crowd. Uh, smile makers. Yeah, Bedoink. I'd definitely say what Bedoink said is right actually. Listening to customers giving feedback that, that can then improve the products and deliver something that people want. That's definitely a valid point. The Pinot, Lelo Pinot. They are excelling in making luxury products and we here, we here absolutely admire all the work that they do. Um, they look good, they feel good. Um, they're, ne they're never fault. They're ne there's never a fault with them. How many settings would be too many settings? Can you have too many settings? As long as the design is <laughs> intuitive. Twelve hundred, to be precise. <laughs> Apparently. Marvie Darling says she needs adjustable vibration. Yeah. She likes to start low and build it up. Yeah. Why is the Pinot not worth the money? Why is the Lelo Pinot not worth the money? Mm. Where does it fail? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, there's more than there's more than just looks to a product. I guess it's got to deliver in the the feeling. That's where you've got to find the right balance between design and the science behind it. That's that's the point of perfection, I think. Um, but to be honest, <laughs> yeah, John, I think this is a first, right? A sex tech talk uh, with Periscope added on. I hope we can do this a bit more often, and maybe get some people here. 
What do people think to maybe having a group of us here and we have a discussion as a team? Okay, we've got four minutes left on this question. And if anybody else has any other ideas to propose, any other brands that they've heard of recently that are producing some great products, or not so much as the case may be, then let us know. Hit us up at Kiru or hashtag sex toys, hashtag sex tech talk. Okay, so at the moment it seems like there's a 50-50 split of people do want looks or people don't want looks so much and they want the functionality. Mm -hmm. They want it to actually function despite the looks. So, if, for example, this scenario, a product looks like the weirdest animal that you've pulled out of the depths of the ocean, but it feels absolutely amazing and pleasures you to climax within minutes. Is that okay? Would you go for that? That then suggests to me that maybe the dragon dildos are a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> never held one. Never actually seen one in real life. Never I've seen one. one like, no, never <laughs> inserted one even. No. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> Okay, people are talking about unsafe materials that, 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 that should never be a feature of anything. Oh God. I've never heard of anyone get one stuck behind their pubic bone, Marvy darling. <laughs> that is, that is, uh, that is, <laughs> thanks for disclosing that information. Sex death love horror stories. <laughs> yeah, horror stories. Make a, make a Vice documentary about sex problems. Sex horror stories. Oh wow, something that can outlast you. And oh, yeah. How long do you last? Uh, I, I think that's an illness where people might not orgasm for an hour straight or something. Right? Well, if you run it's out of battery. Picture. Imagine you run out of battery. Imagine you're like, yes, 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 and then like the battery dies. Nah. Ah, it's a battery life. Ah, I, I tested important. it and it's uh, over two or three hours. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to last for you hours. For so long if long. you're one of those ones that goes for hours or whether you're for three minutes, uh, then. Yeah, should be alright. By the way, most people uh, actually last less than 10 minutes. I can't remember the exact numbers, but I saw a considerable figure, and uh, it's quite shocking actually. It's almost time for question two, and a few seconds is coming up. Question two coming up soon. Hold up, how? What do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to do a, a, a bridge to something uh, related to power now. So a solar power. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's coming. Uh, okay, okay. Ha -ha. Yeah. Very funny. Solar, holder, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. <laughs> so, are you saying we could make renewable energy by fucking ourselves? Yeah, like a dynamo in there. And there's something in there. That's a money maker. <laughs> okay, I posted the so, second question. Question number two. Are you old school and into wall plug-in devices or tech forward and all about the USB? There's been an argument that the USB and rechargeable products aren't powerful enough to really harness some good feeling. And on the other side of the argument is the remote products that you can move around with are much more realistic to use as you're exploring your sex life through your house or someone else's house or hotel or wherever you might be. Um, but what side do you what side are you on? And why? As you can see this uh, sexy girl that is eating a cable doesn't like uh, wall plugins. Um, <laughs> but she's a moron because she's actually eating the cable from outdoors. So uh, she just got seven thousand volts for her brain. <laughs> But at least she's wearing a hard hat. So, it seems that wireless toys are the new trend, and that's the way that everybody's going. Um, but also bear in mind the fact that USBs are constantly being updated, like all the other technology. And at the moment we have USB 2.0, uh, there's been 3.0s and I've even seen 4.0 in development. The concept that it's 
It works both ways round from both ends and sends the fastest signal you can ever imagine. So what do you do then when all your products that were USB 2.0 or 3.0 and then the whole update process again? It would be a nightmare. Uh, I think that wall-mounted ones that are adaptable so you can choose both, definitely a wise idea. Um, or, as we've all seen, there's the charging mats. You put your phone on it and you can charge you can. Yeah, without plugging in. And that would be cool. People are saying they're going with USB. Yeah, People USB like is the first. Ion batteries. Uh, there are different options. Mm, mm. We've got... condoms.org, all about condoms. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your comments. Hello, Caitlin, as well. Good to see you. <laughs> KL Reinhardt is here. Yeah, the Octopus Pulse. I could actually talk to Adam about that. He, I think he'd be really interested in that comment. Um, could you include uh, octopus, uh, the Octopusy Pulse? Should, should I tweet a picture of it? Yeah, maybe you could um, join a picture of uh, Octopus Pulse. Um, also, mention it to Adam because he'd probably like to join in with this talk as well. Mm -hmm. Hello, Duck Junior. Six minutes till the next question. All right, six minutes left, guys. Any other questions you'd like to know? Let's hit us up on Twitter or ask me on here, and I'll see what I can do. Has anyone else uh, even uh, used the uh, the Real Touch recently? I'm not quite sure where they stand at the moment, but it'd be interesting to know. We what still have lube for them. them. <laughs> oh God, yeah, we still got their lube. We still got their products as well. Um, need need not say that it's been pulled to pieces. <laughs> yeah, John Lane has a good point, which is we are wireless with everything, and we probably will be wireless with everything for a long time. So it doesn't make sense to have it um, have it attached to a wall. I mean, when. When, when would you be able to find a plug? But, brilliant point made on here, we could use solar, or hola power, <laughs> <laughs> or hola power, oh, solar yes. power, so you put your dildo out in the sun, like, yeah, charge, let it get really hot, and then like, wait, well, yeah, go for it. And then you put it where the sun don't shine, to get the... Yeah, yeah, you put it where the sun don't shine, very good. Quick off the mark there. <laughs> I can see it now. Put it where the sun shines, and then you can play with it where the sun don't shine. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Question three coming up momentarily. Yeah, cheers. four more minutes. Cheers. Tips. Tips. <laughs> Yeah, the price of uh, the, the flights out to the Sahara Desert will increase rapidly. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kinky Space, for retweeting. Oh, hello, Kinky Space. Wow. We're, we're getting like 10 notifications per minute. Optimus, or... yeah, I think that's another separate topic, but Octopussy Pulse is a brilliant product. I would highly recommend that people try that, actually. It's something like you've never felt before. Our Masturbates, her, masturbates in a unique way, like moving up and down. But the octopusy pulse is something else altogether. Um, it uses uh, oscillating movements, which was used to be to help you with back problems and things like that. But it's translated to slide onto your penis and massage it in a way that you don't even have to move. Yeah, the pulse is out now. Um, you can get it at, uh, I think it's octopusy.com. Mm, I can't find octopusy.com, it shows me a lot of James Bond paraphernalia. 
Okay. Um, I'll just double check for you guys. Yeah, we'll tweet it up. Oh, we'll be reviewing something. it. Awesome. Definitely let us know your review through um, through Twitter. I've been fascinated to hear about that. really successful this uh, sex tech talk there are so many people discussing everything now great i hope sex tech talk keeps improving we have one more minute uh, to talk about uh, how we like to charge our toys and then uh. on to the next week so to summarize the last question i think moving forwards going into products that charge on mats would be great then you've got a hundred percent waterproof seal that would be something that hasn't been done yet and by the looks of it we all agree that uh, that we don't want them stuck to the wall anymore now screw the wire and screw yourself <laughs> go screw yourself Next question in a minute. What tag are you in right now? Sex tag talk still? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, H Octopussy. Oh, no? Yes. Hot Octopussy. Yes, hot. That's the one. Thank you, boy toy tester. Legend, he knows his toys. Boys and their toys. Expertise. Girls and their pearls. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> okay, it's time for the next question. Next question coming up. Read it out as soon as you see it, man. Yeah. Everybody can join in. Hello again, everybody. Hope you're alright, wherever you are in the world. Question three. The debate. Teledildonics, Cyberdildonics. Which one is for you? Uh, it's a 50-50 debate and it's one that will probably keep evolving for a while. Um, I could say personally, and I think we agree in the office, that teledildonics is a bit dated now. It's, it's a, a 70s term. term that was known well, but it's as dated as the telephone. You know, it's teledildonics, television. Um, I think it's probably time to move on and to update to something a bit more... Uh, a bit more of a modern uh, feeling about it, such as interactive or remote, um, cyber, haptic. All these words describe it a bit, bit better and are a lot easier to say. Though uh, recently I've heard that teledildonics is a funny word. Uh, it's most certainly funny and mm -hmm. sex should be funny, but at the same time, I think that cyberdildonics is more direct and explains a little bit more. Um, it'd be really interesting to hear your opinions, guys, and to maybe add a vote, and we'll count up the votes at the end and see which one is the winner. So just post your answer directly, say question three, and say the word that you want with the hashtag debate, hashtag sex tech talk, and we'll add them all up at the end to see how many, which one was the winner. Ah, John still likes the word teledildonics. Nice. <laughs> Fair enough, each to their own. He got hella sick knowledge on teledildonics. Yeah. Oh yeah, cyber. It's true. Cyber is often related to things that aren't actually, um, aren't actually good. Um, like cyber sex and cyber rape and all these things. That's something that needs to change. Because um, it's not actually as bad as it seems. It's an awesome word. <laughs> yeah. So, what would replace cyber or teledildonics? Hmm. What, what's everyone's favourite? Maybe remote sex toys is uh, something people can relate with. Remote sex toys? Or is it too general? Remote sex toys make sense to me, because I think that 
it says everything in three words, right? Um, yeah, but Cyber Dildonic says everything in one word, so that has that going for itself. Yeah, Dildonic. Yeah. yeah. He's right. John, you're right. Tele Dildonics does need more of an opportunity. I don't think it's probably reached even one seventh of the world. I, I highly <laughs> doubt that even a billion people understand that word or could even say that word. Half the world probably don't even have that in their language. So we need to put it in there. I, I see a lot of people tweeting all the time that teledildonics is my new favorite word. Oh, yeah. Everybody, every day people are discovering the word and they're having a laugh about it. Haha. <laughs> yes, remote sex toys. Ah, is there a Chinese symbol for remote sex toys? <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese characters they have to add to their uh, old language. <laughs> Traditional Chinese, teledildonics. <laughs> what the hell would that look like? It look like a vagina and a penis, but yeah, I made that jade. Yeah, let's make one of those. <laughs> Fully jade sex toy. Yes, Leslie definitely goes with Teledildonics. Technodonics. Oh, that's a good one. Wow. Yeah. Write it down, write it down, write it down. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the info. <laughs> kinky space. Yeah, nice one, kinky space. Good stuff. It's definitely to do with the virtual world, right? Like, everything that happens on this is kind of virtual. So, like, virtual sex toys or virtual dildonics. That's not quite, that's not quite right. Virtual dildo. Wait. Mm -hmm. Next sex tech talk, I hope that we could expand more on the virtual world because there's really interesting things happening in that world at the moment. Uh, the technology is advancing rapidly, like so rapidly. We've found loads of companies recently who are creating brilliant aug augmented reality technology. Beyond that, they're making brilliant, brilliant um, software to go with it and the quality of the graphics is Unbelievable. But stay on topic. <laughs> yeah. The five more minutes of cyberdome money. Sex tech. Yeah. Marvie darling, you joker. <laughs> She's on her phone. Yeah. Slash vibrator. From Switzerland. Yay. Yay. Bring us back some chocolate. Please. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Lelo? Oh no, what is it? Yes. Yes. Lelo. Let me see your Lelo. Lay low. Cyber chocolate. Uh, chocomella chocolate. Yeah. Uh, no. So, yeah. It's great. We set us up with enough, enough to drink and to eat for uh, a millennium. Uh, might as well plug that in there. Boom. For anybody that has just joined us, we're on the Sex Tech Talk, follow us on Twitter and post your comments. We've had three questions so far and four and five are coming in a minute. We're talking about everything to do with sex, lifestyle, tech, anything relationship based or anything you want to learn. Please tweet us and we'll respond as a group. We've got some great people online helping us from all over the world. And if you couldn't find a more enthusiastic bunch of people, so let us know your opinions. So, a few minutes left of question three. Teledildonics, cyberdildonics. Which one is it? Is the best? Hashtag sex tech talk. Yeah, exactly. Astroglide mentions that cyber just makes you think of sex uh, from chat from the 90s. And yeah, that's pretty much 
what I was thinking as well. Cyber implies some <laughs> sort of weird kids game that focuses on intergalactic aliens. That's what I think of anyway. Who are all these people, John? You keep talking about the lawnmower man, like the cyber man. Like these are <laughs> they're probably way before my time, right? <laughs> lawnmower man. Wow. Um, to quickly summarise, I think Teledildonics has won that one by a landslide. Um, I'm not even going to question the votes because it yeah. seems nobody wanted cyber, just me. So one for me and Next dog sex. 15 plus for Teledildonics, so let's go with that one. It's almost time for the next question anyway. Uh, thanks, yeah, cool. Cheers. Maybe shout some people out who are in the room. Tell everybody yeah. that's following us uh, to hit us up. Now uh, say hello. Yeah, all, uh, all seven people following us. <laughs> <laughs> hit us up online and we'll follow you back, etc. Yay! Woo! John's happy boy. <laughs> Uh, Leslie changed her mind again, back to uh, Cyber Galdonics. Oh, Leslie, come on. Go make a decision. I've, yeah, thanks. I've gone with Cyber, so Leslie's on my side. Two to Cyber, and <laughs> millions to Telly. So whatever, Leslie, we haven't really done much to change it. Uh, our next invention is smell of Galdonics. <laughs> smell of <laughs> Ooh, what would that smell? People are going to send some weird like smells. Like Oh my god. <laughs> Leslie doesn't know. You don't know, man. You don't know. <laughs> Well, it's all about opinions. It's uh, oh, when it comes to sex. I think it's very personal. Uh, Sarah just carries the little winner to Swiss. As you do. Yes. Nice one, Marvy darling. So, time for question four. In has, has sex tech penetrated more than just your bedroom? Has a toy changed your sex life altogether, or changed your perspective on anything to do with sex? Maybe you're into kinky stuff. Maybe you're not. Maybe it transformed you into some. Realize that you like something that you never thought was possible. Um, I think there's way more fetishes out there than you could ever imagine, and there's definitely a product for each fetish. It just depends which one's for you. Thank you, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, for enlightening everybody to the world of sex. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. So. Moving on with the question, um, any sex toys that have transformed your opinions on sex or any sex toys that enlightened you to having fun in a different way, uh, be it a butt plug or a remote anal stimulator, um, let us know which one is the best for you and which one really changed your perspective on things. For me, it was Hot Octopus's Pulse that really changed things because I didn't know that without movement, up and down, you can actually ejaculate. It's simple vibrations in one spot, a specific spot on the penis, mm -hmm. that then stimulates you to coming pretty quickly, apparently. Um, uh, yeah. Boy Toy Tester. Onyx with Oculus. And that's going to be awesome. Can't wait for this thing to be connected to Oculus. Uh, as it is yet, we've got um, we synchronised with a couple of headsets, um, and we've also encoded a few adult movies so that as this moves up and down, you're watching the porn and it goes up and down together. That really changed everything for me, anyway. Wow, adult language helped a friend get her first orgasm. <laughs> Lad. I think we should all be proud if we make girls orgasm. <laughs> a nice moment. Yeah, the electro rope. rope, what is that? Oh, no way. Oh, there is an electro Is there an electro rope? Or is that a question? So, I. Mecha dildo. <laughs> yeah, the mecha dildo. This thing that's got like ten prongs and it's like ah, that was in a movie once I think. Like a hentai dildo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, 
the uh, the sales of rope and zip ties went up drastically uh, from <laughs> from Fifty Shades that of Grey. That one movie. So evidently, uh, opening gateways is along the right paths. I would suggest going to your local DIY store and purchasing the rope that preferably has uh, as little texture on it as possible so you don't get friction burn, you know, and it's such a kind of thing. Okay. Oh, there is. Electro rope. Cool. Everybody look for electro rope. Is it electro skin? I don't know. It sounds cool. What does it chuck you or what does it do? Cyber rope. No, John. Teddy rope. <laughs> Cyber rope. Crazy word. Madman. <laughs> what would you do though? If you had a rope, how would you control it remotely? You know, like, if someone maybe ties themselves to the, you know, to the thing, and like, oh yeah, do me. And then you're like, shit, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> how would you control your partner with that? Maybe it's like memory rope. It unties after a while. Mm. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. To comment on Marvy Darling's tweet, sex tech and toys have changed her life entirely, mm -hmm. as it's mainly the focus on of her of her career now. But I would also say that it's great because it's opened many doors for different people um, in career paths or just pastimes, or drastically improved their confidence because from the bedroom into the, your daily life. The confidence can can grow and it can infect you in a way that that really really changes your perspective on things and you can see it in someone when they feel more sexually confident. Red Light Center is talking about inflatables. Inflatables. Mm -hmm. In what way? Yeah, I'll ask him. Mr. Unicorn. In what way? <laughs> yeah. Inflatable has changed her pleasure. I've heard an argument that sorry, that self pleasure was actually the original form of pleasure and sex was purely functional to to reproduce and it was just done, you know, as guys do, it was over in three minutes. And <laughs> that Masturbation was actually the original form of feeling better and should be pushed. Sex toys should enhance the original pleasure. You can do it yourself, you're not relying on anyone else, so why don't you pleasure yourself? And then sex was just the addition to reproduce. It was like that for millions and millions of years. Um, people sitting around playing with themselves and I don't know what they were doing, all our ancestors, but it's definitely still a human trait and we all we all want to do it on a regular basis and with sex toys to enhance it you can only get more fun in more in more ways um, so, yeah. what kind of inflatables have people seen and liked any specific ones Boy toy teaser wants the next question. Wow. Right, he's... <laughs> <laughs> Two more minutes for boy toy tester. Two minutes. Question. Have a wank. There are 22 replies uh, to this last question mm. over the last minute. So. Okay. It's really gone crazy. What did Reinhardt say? He had some happy endings with a well known sleep device. Nice. Okay, a few more minutes lined up for question five. Read some fun tweets from the sex tech dog hashtag. John loves his movies, doesn't he? <laughs> Jedi Wars. 
Oh yeah, of course. I've seen you mention Doctor Who a lot, like that. Yeah. I don't blame you. It's cool, man. Thank you, uh, Top Glider, for the retweet. Yeah, Top Glider all the way. Lightsaber, yeah, really? <laughs> well, that's one I just thought about that. That's one deadly vibrator. <laughs> Vroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Darth force is strong with this one. <laughs> Darth Vader got a double ended one, like a <laughs> double bomb. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it possible for. Uh, for men to have uh, blended orgasms, because we're talking about this today, like it's definitely possible for women to have them, and that's one way that your life can be improved. But do guys have them as well? Feel the connection. Kiro.com.